Hello, I am Endlessness and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII of a Crisis and in this video I wanted to give you a guide for the Trial of Ifrit and Bahamut EX2 and this battle has recommended power of 260,000 and I also have to point out that while it is a guide I can't really consider it a proper guide because it took me almost three weeks of adjustments on my team to be able to clear this battle and I can only show you the requirements I had to meet with my own team, but they might vary depending on your equipment. And when we get this level 75 cap increase, I will play around more with this battle, test more things, and we'll try to make another guide that will hopefully be more accessible since we'll get stronger and those extra few levels, it should be easier to survive. But for now, there is nothing more I can do, so I can only barely squeeze through this battle, so I hope this breakdown will suffice. We have to fight Ifrit and Bahamut at the same time, and we also can't just go and kill one of the bosses while leaving the other one at full HP. We have to damage them both simultaneously, so when we finally kill one of the bosses, the other one doesn't have a lot of HP left, so we can finish him off quickly. Also, Ifrit gets an attack buff at the beginning of the battle and he's immune to attack decrease. So now that we have those new limit breaks, Nanaki's or Matt's new limit break is the only thing in a game that can nullify Ifrit's attack buffs. But if you don't use them, you can only buff your own team's defense in order to survive him. Also interesting note about Ifrit is he isn't immune to poison. So if you'd like to bring a poison materia and apply that poison on him, poison is actually very good for Ifrit because he has an insane amount of HP, so it will do quite a lot of damage per tick. As for Bahamut, it's the same Bahamut we know from the EX battles. He can buff his magic and physical attack and his Mega Flare does a lot of damage, but if you can and you definitely should bring something to debuff his attack, and you can also debuff Bahamut's and both Ifrit's physical and magic defense to do more damage. I use Cloud, Sephiroth and Aerith for this battle and my team is at 209,000 power. Also Cloud is my Ice DPS with magic defense buff, Sephiroth is my non-elemental AoE DPS with attack debuffs and Aerith is my healer and support. Let's go with Aerith first, so I used Aerith's costume with HP and heal, healing wind as her limit break, fairy tale in main weapon slot for AoE heals, and then Mithril Rod in case Aerith will need to support with physical or magic defense. For sub weapons I used event weapon beach parasol because it boosts HP and magic defense. Butterfly Edge because it provided me with most amount of HP and also Guard Stick for heals. And lastly, I also equipped Cura Materia for single target heals and Defaith to help Sephiroth debuff Bahamut's magic attack. And that Fire Blow is just a stat stick. But it'll put Aerith at 10.2 HP and 2.4 heals. Also, Aerith's physical defense is at 118 and magic defense is at 146. Then I have Cloud with his Ice Arknum costume and his Ice Weapon and also Shiva Summon. And Cloud also has Bandage Sword but since it's below OB6 it provides magic defense shields only at mid potency and that's why I use Aerith with Metro Lord as support. And as for sub weapons, I use Twinkling Star to increase Cloud's HP and it also boosts physical ability potency. And then I have Event Weapon Thousand Waves because it also increases HP and magic defense. And Bold Eagle because it boosts both physical attack and ice potency. As for materials, Cloud's materials are all just stat sticks to increase mostly his HP and defensive stats rather than focusing on physical attack and DPS. So Cloud is at 10.8 HP and 3.6 physical attack, but also has 115 physical defense as well as 142 magic defense. 
Lastly, I have Sephiroth, who is my non-elemental DPS, so I use HP and magic ability mastery outfits and Helia colorizing his new limit break. Also, Protector's Blade for AoE DPS and Kuja Spirit Blade to debuff Bahamut's magic and physical attack. And as sub weapons, I use Power Soul to boost Sephiroth's HP and Sun Umbrella to boost magic attack, and both of those weapons boost magic ability potency. And lastly, I have Bahamut Summon Weapon to boost HP and magic defense. And as for Materia, I have equipped Sephiroth with Barrier Materia to give a physical defense buff to a single ally as support. And two other Materia slots are just stat sticks that again focus more on boosting his HP and defensive stats than his magic attack. So Sephiroth has 10,000 HP and 3.4 magic attack but also 110 physical defense and 154 magic defense. So, important notes or more like an important information dump. It took me almost three weeks of adjusting my team to find this balance between HP, magic and physical defense so that my team wouldn't die to that initial wave of attacks and also to get this close to flawless run to clear this battle. I also needed my healer to have enough heal stat as well and all my characters they have 10,000 HP and also at least 110 physical defense and I also tried to get them all around 140-150 magic defense. Anything less and they wouldn't survive. So if you'd have around 170 magic defense and 130 physical defense, I think a bit over 9000 HP would suffice, but it's very hard to get those stats. Also, yes, I used two exclusive OB10 weapons, but unlike the balance between HP, defense and heal being required for this battle, you can have less DPS and lower overboosted weapons and you'll be still able to clear it. It'll just take you a little bit longer, but the phases won't change, they'll just repeat. If you plan to use Sephiroth, you could go with Edged Wings and Ice Arcanum, and it might actually benefit you, because I was using Protector's Blade, an AoE weapon that targeted both Bahamut and Ifrit, and I couldn't control where the damage would go. For example, if you would have two single target DPS weapons. When Bahamut starts his countdown, you could delay it until it says, for example, three on the screen and take that time to do some damage on Ifrit before switching to Bahamut to deplete his gauge. With Sephiroth's AoE weapon, I couldn't delay that. Therefore, it felt a little bit like I was trying to catch up with the battle and its phases while Having two single target weapons would give you a lot more control over the battle and its phases. My friend Oblivion recently cleared EX2 battle while having Barret as a healer, Nanaki support with his new limit break to nullify Ifrit's attack buff, and also Ice Sephiroth was his only DPS and he also used Biomateria to poison Ifrit. Doing big damage isn't the most important thing here. This battle is more about survival and there is no DPS race, unlike there was with Bahamut's EX2. Here, in this battle, DPS race starts after you kill one of the bosses, so you have to finish off the other one very quickly, otherwise he kills you. But until you do that, those phases will just repeat and all you have to do is survive and that's actually the hardest part. That's why I said even though I use Cloud and Sephiroth with their OB10 weapons, this isn't a requirement. This battle might take longer, but Bahamut and Ifrit will just repeat the same phases. Bahamut will have his Mega Flare countdown and Ifrit will have his Ignition with the Ice Gauge, and that will be followed by Crimson Dive. It's alright if you take longer. Also, I tried Poison Materia myself and it works surprisingly very well. Here I couldn't use it mainly because I would lose the stats that I needed to survive, but if you are able to equip it, I recommend bringing a Poison Materia and just poisoning Ifrit while you do DPS on, on Bahamut. Also, I have to note that I used Aerith with Mithril Rod, which is now above OB6, but even when it was below OB6, it still would have worked. 
I needed it to be able to get that high Ponzi, so three stacks, magic defense shield for my team at the beginning of the battle for my team to survive. If you have OB6 bandage sword, you don't have to worry about that, but I also found Mithril Rod very nice because it also provides team physical defense, which was also very crucial for me to nullify the physical debuffs that will be inflicted to your entire team at some point. Also, if you have more defensive stats, you'll need less HP. It's just the best I could personally come up with for my team. In this battle, you can also use many different characters. Tifa as DPS will be great because she's a great non-elemental and ice DPS, and also a debuffer. But I also seen people use Tifa as a healer. Also, Mats, especially with his new limit break, and Cenibeat will be great if you can get his stats high enough. Essentially, what you need for this battle is a healer, a weapon that will buff magic defense of all allies, and something to debuff Bahamut's attack. If your HP and defense is strong enough, you might not even need a weapon, and some defaith and debrave material might suffice. And of course, ice DPS weapon to deplete Ifrit's ice bar and put Shiva on your ice DPS unit. So, the beginning of the battle is exactly like Bahamut EX2, so we'll be, our magic defense will be debuffed, so we have to nullify and buff ourselves, while we are also debuffing Bahamut's magic attack. So I'm just mainly juggling between Cloud and Aerith to ensure that he won't do anything stupid, because I need that magic defense buff at high Ponzi and also Aerith cannot waste any of her ADB. So after this we have to recover, so heal, and I will switch to Cloud to ensure that he will keep that magic defense buff up. And Hellfire. It's still fine, we're, we're still good, still alive, so now it's still not over because we'll get hit by Crimson Flare very soon, so we have a very limited window to recover. That's why I, I know Sephiroth will just be debuffing, I don't have to control him too much, but I can use his Heliaka Racing Limit Break because it keeps recharging so fast. It doesn't hit very, very hard, but I'll take that. But I'll stay on Cloud to ensure that he will not waste his ADB. Because I need that max Ponzi magic defense up. And also, I cannot let this magic defense shield expire before getting hit, because this, this attack it hurts a lot. Yeah, 400 it's it's still fine, but I will stay on Cloud and the reason is this, this sigil phase. I will stay on Cloud for the en entirety of it, because I don't need to switch to Sephiroth, because he uses AoE attack, so he will break that last sigil, and I just have to make sure that Cloud wouldn't do anything stupid. But we're fine, we have to recover now, so you use the stagger phase to to do as as many heals as you can and now yes Bahamut has his countdown it's fine also again I actually yeah I forgot to target Ifri but it's fine also before this mega mega flare expired so before we deplete the bar I have to put physical defense buff on everyone and that's because Bahamut will debuff our own physical defense so I want this buff to be a little bit smaller and we should be fine so I just debuff Bahamut's attack so it would hurt less also harness magic 
now the ignition bar appears, this ice bar. But during this, Bahamut will do the tail flay, so he will debuff our own physical defense and heat wave. Always try to shield on that. It will happen twice very soon now and I am trying to do so many things at the same time. I, I still I, I switch the defense in time but I am also trying to buff and heal so limit breaks and by the way you don't have to deplete that, ign that ignition bar immediately. It will recharge if you hit it so uh, just before he hits you with that crimson dive you can just do shiva and if you have enough dps it should deplete it so you don't have to fight the whole time to trying to debuff it to deplete it sorry but it's fine we survived and it's not the worst part because now it's dive bomb so we have to recover enough it's actually Aerith who will get hit so We should be fine, but I still have to do the barrier on her, so hopefully she survives. I don't know if I get cure in time. Nope. It's fine. I mean, 6 to 5 HP is still more than enough that we need, but now here it's 10 diamond sigils, so you have to keep switching between your DPS so they don't use any of her weapon abilities. It has to be 3 ADB because it's a very close window. Mega Flare, ignore it. We'll take care of that later on, but as you can see, it's a very close window. But now, recover and can switch to Bahamut to take care of that Mega Flare. And again, I'm, I'm just buffing Sephiroth because I will use his limit break after, yeah, max stance, limit break. I like this limit break, it's annoying you have to buff Sephiroth in any way, but it's helpful because it, it, you, it recharges so fast. It, well, one has appeared, so I know I will get hit by Mega Flare. So again, we have to start debuffing Bahamut, and also we are also debuffed, so we have to take care of that. I'm not gonna sit on that Shiva limit break anymore, any longer. So yeah, debuff and buff. We still got enough time. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. Oh, we are so close, but Mega Flare should be fine even with one magic attack debuff. But as you can see, it's a very tough battle. Yeah, it's fine. More than enough HP because we have also Healing Wind, so use that here. Very soon we should get hit, but by Crimson Flare. If I am correct. But I don't know. Mm, Bahamut is so close. I mean, already red bar. Yeah, Crimson Flare. And this is tricky. Because I don't know if I should risk killing him. Also remember, you cannot kill one of the bosses if you know you can deplete another boss's HP in time. Mm, so close. If you would kill one of the bosses here, you will not get hit by Crimson Flare. Instead, if you kill Bahamut, you would only get hit by Hellfire. If you kill Ifrit, you'll, you'll get hit only by Mega Flare. So, you have to do the math and choose if you want to take a risk or rather play safe. What I did, well, it was a little bit too risky, but 
I knew I would still survive. It's fine. You Actually here, if you are close to killing the bosses, you can ignore that Mega Flare. The countdown is reset, so if you don't have AoE weapon, you can just let it kill Ifrit and let Bahamut just do the countdown on his own, it doesn't matter. But yeah, now it's Rising Heat and that Enrage. That Hellfire, it will end the battle. So after you kill the boss, the other boss that's still alive gets enraged and you have to kill him fast, otherwise that enrage, it will kill you. It's basically like Bahamut at the end of the battle, you have to kill him before he does the Mega Flare, otherwise you're dead. Basically enrage, it will hit you for around 20-30 thousand damage, so you have no chance of surviving that. After you kill a boss, it's a DPS race, so you have to be careful that to deplete the HP of both bosses simultaneously, so you don't kill one too early. But yeah, as, as I, I hope that this you found this video helpful or this guide. As I said, there's no chance I can do any other adjustments to my team, but. As I previously mentioned, you don't need as much DPS, you can have lower overboosted weapons. It's the biggest issue here is to survive. It's it's very intense battle, it's very sweaty, and I actually didn't plan to beat this battle, to clear this battle. I thought I will need level 75, also I am so close on some upgrade weapon upgrades from the weapon parts requests that we get every few days that well I, it just happened but yeah I, I don't know I'll just wait I'll try to make another guide after we get those this level 75 cap increase but for now this is all I can do I can barely squeeze through this battle so yeah I hope you found this helpful and thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next one.